So let's go ahead and lead in into the market. So we got CPI tomorrow, no news today. Just remember, when you're looking at these setups, like I said, uh, the best thing to do is five minutes before news. I would not look at any uh, FZR momentum setups, and then five minute after news would make it easy. Okay, the 40 year back test, like I said, is five minutes before news, shut it down, and wait 12 minutes afterwards on uh, when we did the uh, artificial intelligence back test with Tina. We appreciate her telling us that. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the markets. Uh, we're into an FZR right now. Here's an FZR. Uh, so there's a couple setups that we do in the room. We do an FCR and what's called a momentum trade. So let's go to midnight. Let's take a look at these setups. Uh, let's let's get back in action here. We've we've had our holiday. And we're just getting back in the roll of things. Let's say since midnight we had one, two, three, four setups on the S and P. Now this is the S and P 500. This S P 500 E S. Now. If you're going to trade the setups, and I always tell traders this who's new to the system, you know, if you're going to start trading, the best thing to do is look at the micros. They're one tenth of the big contract. So the ES, then they got the ES micros. Uh, the micros are one tenth. The commissions are extremely low. The margins are extremely low. I think it's fifty dollars for most uh, brokerage houses are fifty dollars uh, for your commission. And then, I mean, your margin requirements are $50, and then the S&P 500 futures is typically $500. So it's one-tenth of the move, though. So not only you take less risk, you're not going to get as much profit, but you take less risk. The reason I say that is to get in a rhythm of these setups is that once you start trading live with this setup, um, you should always sim first and get the rhythm of our setups. We have two setups in the room. We have what's called a... FZR are a full zone retracement, and this is every day. These these setups will never change. This is in the history of the market. The market likes to do either full zone retracements or momentum setups. So it's going to do one of two things, and the reason being the market's either going to go vertical or it's going to be chop um, on a daily basis. So let's just make sure we got this full zone retracements and FZR. Make sure we get our mind right for the year. So this is an FZR which is a full zone retracement. That's our first setup. What that means is that you're letting price come down into our zone, our buy zone. Now what a buy zone is, is a buy zone is where you have, right here we go, oops. A buy zone is where you have um, this green zone Right here, here's a green zone since midnight. So this, since midnight, we've only been buying on the S&P 500. There's been no sell setups at all. So once price gets at or inside of this zone, this is called a zone, a buy zone is green. That's a buy zone. A sell zone will be red. In, once it gets at or inside of the zone, that's called a full zone retracement because price likes to bounce out of the zone. So once we get inside of it, we're looking for a continuation for price to continue. This last trade that you guys should still be in, if you're trailing, um, this is a full zone retracement also. So we call those FCR trades. So just to make sure we get off to the right start this year, when you hear us talk about FCR in the room, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about price retracing to the zone and then getting an arrow long because it just got us pulled in into the trade. Okay, so that is a full zone retracement trade, or it's called an FZR. What happens is, is that when the market starts moving then outside of the zone or starts moving with a higher, lower, lower high, here's a higher low, or a what's called a W bottom, once it starts moving this higher low, I love higher low trades with the system, is that you get what's called typically a momentum trade. Now a MOMO trade is where you have price that cannot retrace very much and you got a continuation to that side, in that direction, I'm sorry. So then we got momentum set up, which is called a MOMO. So when you hear me talking about a MOMO trade, what that means, let's go over, first of all, let me go over this one real quick. That means that the market has not retraced very much. 
and you're getting a continuation trade to the upside. So it's a momentum setup, and then we got a full zone retracement setup. So let's go over the both those real quick, just to get our mind right, and we'll go over today's action. So the momentum is here. Here's here's the momentum trade that occurred this morning. So it's called a Momo. So when I label these charts all year long, there's two setups, and that's it. There's nothing. No, there's no other setups to learn. No other setups to follow. No, no setups to, well, the market has changed. We're going to change setups. All right, this is it. There's only two setups that the market, according to this algorithm, likes to do. And it's either going to be a Momo or an FZR. An FZR, we are inside or at the zone. And see our oscillator below has gotten below 20. See our oscillator below here is below 20. The momentum setup, if you notice, when the arrow fires here, the oscillator does not get below 20. So that means there's momentum in the market, and that should carry price up, which it did. The fill in a live trade would be the high of this bar between 39.40 and three quarters, the 39.41, and the potential was all the way up to 54. So you had a you had a 13 point S&P point potential on this Momo trade, all right? These trades are not scalping trades unless you use smaller time frames, which you can. But you know we're not risking a couple dollars, a couple points. I'm sorry, to make a point, all right? Some of these moves, as we know, the members know, can be between 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It can go all the way up, just depending on how hot the market is. So, you know, you just have to watch for these two setups. When the market is, if it does have a full retracement over here, which it did, full retracement, arrow fired at the zone, you just got to be careful with these because, see, it, it never reached, it's right at the zone, it's not really in the zone, but it's still a nice S&P point play, 50 and, 50 and a quarter potential high is 53, but, you know, 11 ticks, but look how when you get into the zone, you're getting more of a, a run to the upside. Look how we got into the zone and the high of this bar, 47 and three quarters on the last trade, that potential is 56. That's almost 10 S&P point potential, 40 ticks potential right there on our last setup. The point is, is that I don't like FZR trades that are in no man's land up here. So if I get a full retracement, if I get a full retracement when I'm above the zone, way above the zone, then I want to strictly look for momentum. I want to look for a momentum setup. If I get a retracement inside of the zone on a nice retracement, then I'm going to look for an FZR right here. All right, so that's that's the biggest thing between a Momo and FZR. F, Momos happen when the market gets hot. All right, so you're going to see Momo trades happen after the New York Open today. You're, you're probably going to see Momo trades occur. And why? I have, what the reason I have these moving averages on here also is this: moving average to me are absolutely worthless. You know, I do like them on the on the. Uh, I called out 4150 forever in the room, and that was our high. The reason being, I like moving average on the daily and weekly chart. Here is my target of 4150 on the S and P. And we hit 41.50 and crashed. You know, that's because it's up against my 550, my 200, my 20, and my 50. That's the only moving average I use. But I do like them on the daily and weekly, and we go over that stuff all the time. But I do not like them at all for support and resistance. I do like them for trend direction, though. So the moving averages I have on here are very simple. You know, if the smaller moving average, the smallest one is the white MA right here. And what that says is if the white MA on a Momo trade is above the magenta, the smaller MA, which is a 50, 50 MA, SMA, if it's above, I'm sorry, EMA, if it's above it, then we got strong momentum. You're going to see nice strong momentum. If it's below it, you don't have strong momentum. So you can use these two MAs to gauge the, the size of the momentum on a setup. 
So if the if the if the market has a strong momentum or weak momentum. So if I got strong momentum, let's go to yesterday at one or two o'clock, my time of day trade to start watching these setups again. You notice I went from an FZR and went right. Here's an FZR trade. It has a full retracement. But look at this momentum trade. These are the momentum trades I'd love to see. Why? Because the oscillator, when I got an arrow that fired yesterday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, my oscillator never went below 20, went right to 20. So I'm, I'm qualified for momentum. But my, look at my moving average. Look how my smaller MA, my 20 is above my 50. So you can see I have a nice continuation from a momentum setup standpoint in direction of the overall trend. Now, the key is this trend that makes the, makes the setup work. The key is this trend. The trend is up. The zone is green. So you want to take only buys. The algo will only fire trades in direction of the trend. So that's one thing that the momentum does. That's why I have these moving averages on here. Is It shows me that there's strong momentum setup. Here's another momentum setup. Here's another momentum setup. The oscillator is above 80. That's an extreme momentum and so on. All right, now shorts would be the same way. If I look at shorts, let me find shorts yesterday. Shorts are the same way is that here is a momentum setup. So here's a big uh, um, shorting into the market. We had three arrows right at the zone, just saying short, short, short. If you take a look, we went from an FZR to momentum to momentum. And then look at this. This is what's called an extreme momentum short. This is where you get an arrow that fires with direction of the zone. The zone is red. But this is where I like when I'm away from the zone because now I'm looking for a MOMO. This is an extreme MOMO. An extreme MOMO happens when price action is really weak. And these can be really, really neat situations to be in when you're a day trader because the market's so weak, it keeps setting lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. So we're talking about this fired at 39, 32 and 3 quarters. It went down as far as 12. You were talking about 20 S&P points in a matter of a short period of time here. Why? Look how the oscillator is below 20. Now I'm below 20, right? I'm below 20, and that tells me what? I'm looking for extreme blow-off sell-off. So you can use my FZR and my MOMO to pick spots in the market. That's what we try to do. So if I got a, if I have a full retracement right now, the market's ticking right now, and if I get below 20 on a full retracement right now, and the FZR came up, I don't like that trade. I want to see it stay above 20, give me an arrow that fires because then I got a momentum set up. That means price should set higher highs. But I sure as heck don't want an FZR it to have a deep retracement and me not hit my zone and lay right around somewhere in here around the 150 MA. I don't want to see a trade there because I'm not at my zone. If you want an FZR trade, you're going to have to be at the zone or inside the zone for a high probability trade. That's just period. You're going to have to be at or inside the zone. If you're looking for momentum trades, it can be at the zone, or but majority, you want to see momentum trades outside the zone. So we want to see this right now. The next setup I want to see in the S&P 500, it's very clear, very, very clear. We want to see a momentum setup. We want to see this oscillator stay above 20. I want to see the arrow fire for continuation. All right, and that's what you do on a daily basis. Now, let's talk time frames. I have, this is a standard Ninja Trader Uni Rinko bar. Now, I use Uni Rinko bars a lot different, a lot of traders. Um, no, no one's probably seen... Uh, the offsets like this and the trend and the reversals. So this is what I came up with after doing all my back and forth testing on Rico bars. And I use a 12020 as one of my favorite time frames. The two favorite time frames that I like to trade off of, I'll tell you right now, is a 12020 and a 13535. Those are my two favorite time frames. Period. The 13535 doesn't give you a lot of setups, but when they do, they're high probability setups off of this system. The 12020 will give you more setups and you'll have more stop outs, but you'll see a lot more setups. But it tends to get all the W bottoms, most, uh, most all the W bottoms, most all the W tops, right? 
it tends to get a lot of these setups. If I were to trade the 135.35 over 120.20, what's the difference? The difference is this. The difference is going to be your stop. All right. The higher you uni rinko bar that you go, the more stop you're going to have. So the rule of thumb is this, and this is why micros work really well at this system if you're learning how to trade the system so you don't get a lot of big drawdowns and so on. But if, if you like, what you want to see is you want to see that you want to see price action come down to the zone and get out of the zone, right? Well, if you trade a real small time frame like a 110 over a 10, a 11010 or a 11313, which I'll show you in the room how to trade a smaller time frame if you're scalpers. If you do that, you're going to get a lot of setups. You're going to get a lot, a lot of setups. But if you trade a 120.20 or all the way to 135.35, you don't get a lot of setups. You get just a few arrows a day on 135.35 and a 120.20, you don't get as many as a 113.13. So picking, your, picking an uni rinko bar, to me, those are my two favorite time frames. If you want to get off on the right foot with my algorithm, use a 120.20 and use a 135.35 and just let your favorite market trade. This works on all markets, all futures, all stocks, all currency. We got traders trading crypto on it. We got traders trading Forex on it. We got traders trading index futures on it. You know, whatever you want to trade, it's the same exact setup. You're either an FCR or your momentum setup. The algorithm does all the work for us. All right? So that being said, since we know that, we're looking for a momentum setup right here, a momentum setup. All right? What I've added now, which we're going to go over next week, all right, and I'll go over it this week too when I'm in the room. Um, I'm in the room at 8.15 in the morning on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. We'll go over the daily charts. We'll go over the weekly charts. We'll see what targets we got. Uh, we were predicting 41.50 on the S&P major top. Gosh, for over a month and a half, hit it and just crashed. You know, so, you know, our targets are pretty good on the daily and weekly, but mainly I'm here to educate on the FCR momentum setups. How can, we, how can we have the, um, the edge over our trading algorithms, our opponents? Because typically you're not trading against professional traders. You're not tri typically trading against prop firms. You're trading against algorithms. Um, you know, Goldman Sachs, Delta program, and so on. You're trading against high-frequency trading algorithms. So that's, but the algorithms leave their footprint. They leave their footprint over electronic trading, and that's where our system comes in. So as you can tell, we're setting up for a momentum setup right now. We're not above 20. Right there, the arrow fired. So let's say that you're taking this trade and you miss this trade right here. Your stop initially is going to have to be the low of that bar. So the low of that bar. So there's your, let me bring this over. Your initial stop is going to be low of the bar. So if you trade off of a 113.13, you know, I like to go a couple ticks outside of that. Um, I personally like to go five ticks outside of it, but you can do what you want to do. Uh, but as he starts moving up, you can use this as a trail for an uni. So every every two bars that this moves up, you can move your stop up, move your stop up to low, because if that uni trend is going to continue according to how it's designed, that should never turn red, right? It should never break the low of this bar right here. So then you can move your stop up right there. Now your stop has just moved up to the low of that bar. So. But your fills, if you trade live fills on uni bars, are going to be the high of the bar. So once it turns green, it's going to be the high. So your risk you're taking on your stop is going to be between this high and this low. So here's your risk on the initial risk. That's why trading unis is a good way to, I mean, micro is a good way to start out until you get used to the rhythm, rhythm of it. And then you, it's one-tenth of the big contract. And then once you get rolling the big contract, if you want to do that, which a lot of traders do, is you get that type of movement, okay? Now, we do have an auto program that we're releasing that will take these arrows. So what, wherever these arrows fire, and autos will automatically fire in. So here is crude oil yesterday. Um, I, have, I am trading the auto right now on 9.30 to 4 o'clock. So it will start looking for trades right at 9 o'clock on crude, I'm sorry. So it'll start looking for trades. Yesterday it started looking for trades right at 9 o'clock. All right, so here's right there. So here's a trade yesterday. Right in, uh, I have it on NYMEX. So I have on NYMEX 1. I have a 120.20 Uni Rinko on crude oil, the crude oil micros. You can do the big contract also. Trading hours, NYMEX, metals, RTH1. 
that's the time I have my trading hours set because I want to see when crude oil opens, I want to see momentum setups, and I want to see FZR setups. So what we'll go in the conference call next week when you're getting this update where this algorithm will automatically enter for you and your stops. Um, you can trade what time frames you want and you can trade what different hours you want. What I like to do, I like to do not even on the S&P 500 with the, uh, with the auto algorithm, 9.30 to 4 o'clock on the S&P and then uh, on crude oil, 2 o'clock, I mean 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the, the pit is open. So, you know, that's what I like to see. So what the algorithm will do, it will do the same thing. It will get in these momentum trades automatically for you. It will get into the FZRs automatically for you. Now, what I've added for you, if I've, I've added this stop feature, this is called a, a nice little uh, ATR stop, average shoe ring stop. So it will stop out of all contracts if this is ever violated. You can also use it as entry techniques. It likes to come up to it. Here's another entry technique if you're manually trading and likes to rebound off of it. But this is another way you can, you can use this trailing stop to your advantage. So if I go into this and I go into the algorithm, and another thing I have in this algorithm for you is this, is I have four trailing stop ATRs. I have them all set at 50 right now, so they're all trailing at 50 on crude oil. But let's say you want to do this, and this is how I designed this. Let's say that you want a real tight ATR. So we know that on our first initial moves, there's a four ATRs. Let me show you. I have them all set at 50, so that's why there's just one ATR. Here's how it's designed. What if you want to do this? What if you want on this first initial move, keep it real tight? So if I want to keep it real tight, I know this is a 120-20, right? I know it's a 120-20. I can put in a, a 22 ATR to keep me tight, keep me tight right here on my first move down. So what it's going to do is keep me tight until my first target's hit right there. It's gonna, so my first target's hit here, right there. Then what you can do is you can loosen it up. You can loosen it up to the second ATR value. So if I have my, a second ATR value, let's say at 38, which would be here, or 54 here, then it'll loosen up to the second ATR. So then you got a second ATR, let's say it's at 54 or 50, you're running here. Then the second target hit right here. Then after the second target's hit, it's designed to loosen up to the third ATR you put in. Let's say you want to go to 70, all right? you want to go to 70 or if you want to go to 62 percent retracement then the ATR will loosen up here so as targets hit the ATR will loosen we loosen up we loosen we loosen the reason being you take your most risk in a trade at the beginning of the trade so this is four contracts on the micros yesterday on crude oil you take the most risk in a trade at your initial position so if you want this trailing stop because what will happen is if you close one close outside this trailing stop it's going to close you out 100% of your contracts. And we'll go over this in the conference call from members next week. But what you can do is have really less risk. The market should push to your first contract on the first push, right? It should push. So instead of risking having a ATR all the way up here to 50, right? What if it goes, turns red and, current, and comes back here and stops you out? What you can do is you can tighten it up just above 20 to ride those highs all the way down or here ride those highs all the way down and then it'll loosen up every single one to four ATRs okay so it's a real neat way to you can capture uh, th these setups all right you can trade so let's go back to our setup here I have no trade on crude yet because I'm waiting for the market to open at nine o'clock so in 851, you can see it's not ticking right now because I'm on the RTH1. So this algorithm will start trading on my auto at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, just like yesterday when it opened up there. Here's a whole trading day, what it did, and I'll show you. So that's a whole trading day, what it did. It will stop trading right there. So here's our whole trading day from here. So there, it was had some really nice setups. Didn't have any losing trades yesterday. Uh, on as far as this setting goes, on the this is a one twenty twenty. So, but this is the um, this is how it's set up, right? So it'll start trading 
and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on this as far as, as we progress further. But let's say now, let's say that you, uh, you want to auto in this thing and you're autoed in and you are in the setup right here, right? So the fill had been 55, the high was 56, it went up four ticks so far on this setup. Now it's moving up, see it's still moving. So our live fill would have been 50, high this bar, 55. Now it's up to 50, what is it? High is 57 and a half. So we're, we moved two and a half S&P points so far. But what you can do, if you want a tight trail on this, guys, is that I, did, I showed you guys live uh, uh, Friday who was in here. You can trail this thing real tight, and you can put a 22 ATR stop until the first target's hit. And then on your second target, loosen it up to a 30 stop. And then as your third tar second, third target's hit, loosen it up to a 38 stop. Now my last stop, my last stop I've always used since building this algorithm is 70. I use 70 as my last target. 70 will be my last one for a runner. In fact, on the S&P, I will show you on the S&P on the contract. Here's, let me show you yesterday's real quick. So here's the S&P 500. Uh, here we go. Here's yesterday's into the close. It had a trade. Never hit my ATR stop, but here's a short going into the close. You can see that it never hit the ATR stop. Here's a long. So, you know, you can use these according to how you know. But you see this stop right here? You can move this stop up to this 38 ATR. You can have a real tight ATR stop if you want that. So if I want to go in here, watch this. And I want to say, you know what? I want tight stops. I don't want to go for the for the for the big giant run. I can move 70. Because I have a let's say if that's a 35, I can go to 37. I can do a 37 ATR trail because I have a 35 uni on this to catch big moves. Now what I've done is I now limit my risk as, as we try to hit targets. So now you see my ATR stop was real tight. It never got stopped out because I'm trailing price just below my uni. Right? So what it's going to do, your targets are going to try to get hit as long as the ATR dot never gets stopped out. All right, so that's something you guys can do as far as that goes. Um, but you can loosen it all the way up. I don't like loosening up more than 70 on an ATR, but it depends on what time frame you trade. You know, totally up to you guys how you want to do it. Like I said, my two favorite are the 20 and 35. Now let's go before Gerald shuts this off. Let me go to what's a 113.13. Why trade small time frames? How can I look for setups on small time frames? You can, but there's a specific setup I like to look for. Let me get this off. Specific setup I like to look for. Let me get this out of the way here real quick. So let's go to our charts right here. So our charts right here, I have this smaller chart over here called the, the one. So this is a 12020. Right? And then I've got a 11313 over here. So 11313, you're gonna get a lot of arrows at fire. But the one thing I like with one 11313 is this, a smaller time frame. I do not like FZR trades. Do not like them on smaller time frames. But I love, and I love, 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 love momentum setups coming out of a zone on a small time frame right here this happened look at your small stop at 801 8 o'clock this morning there's your arrow that fires look at the characteristics on this setup though I just come out of an FZR on my 12020 this is an FZR right look at this it just happened this morning right here so at 730 my arrow fired right there my arrow fired at 733.50. So 733.50, this is where you can look for small time frame entries. You can look for macro reversals in zones and go to micro entries for small stops. So there's 130.30 right here. You can see it. 
128, 130.30 right here. Where that bar was my 120.20 firing right here. Those three bars. What you can do is you can check down a smaller time frame. If you see a momentum setup coming out of the FZR, this is where you like to see it right there. This is a momentum setup because what? The oscillator did not get to 20. It's not below 20. My arrow fires. Look at my MAs. My 20 is above my 50, and it does not cross below it. This is an extremely high probability setup right here, and this works on all markets. I don't care what market you look at. It's the same exact setup. You want an arrow of fire coming out of a zone on a smaller time frame. If I come over here, then this is a FZR trade, not a momentum trade because what? You see the FZR? Because I'm below 20. So I would rather traders, I educate traders to look for this setup on smaller time frames than FZR trades. Momentum. I want to see momentum coming into the market when the oscillator doesn't reach 20. Now on sell setups, it's the other way. Here, hold on a second. Here's another one. I come, this is where the 20 fired a zone. Here's my 20. This is yesterday at 3 o'clock on a smaller time frame. I come outside the zone. See, I'm still red. I'm still printing red. My trend, this is a major trend filter right here. This is this is what separates a lot a lot from the uh, other trading systems out there that are available. This trend filter is green. We, we have a bias, right? A lot of traders fail because they counter trend trade the market. I, I don't know how many traders, when I was a guest speaker at Las Vegas Trade Show, and there's over 6,000 traders there, when I asked all the traders out there that was into my, um, when I was up as a guest speaker, I asked them how many traders have made money counter trend trading. You didn't see many raise their hand. There was a few. But you asked how many traders lost their accounts and lost counter trend trading. Almost the whole group raised their hand. So just be aware. I know this from from experience that counter trend trading doesn't work. Not only from my experience, hundreds of traders training, hundreds of traders inside and outside the room over the years. The bottom line, I never seen one counter trend trader make money. Not one. Consistently. So make sure that we're aware of that, that you know, counter trend trading, this zone will help you get out of that. Stick with it. But look what happened. You come out of the zone, smaller time frame, this is the 113.13, Uni Rinko, standard Ninja Rinko. Look at that. Oscillator does not get above, below 20. There's your arrow that fires. Look how small stop you got, 31 and three quarters, and she rallies all the way up to 47. So you had 14 S&P points with a very small stop. All right. So that's how you use smaller time frame. But what I don't like is this. I don't like FZR trades. I don't like FZR trades like this. See how the oscillator gets below 20 on smaller time frames? I don't like these trades. Why? Because I want momentum to come in on the smaller time frame. Momentum, not an FZR. I want this trade. I want to stay, when the arrow fires, I want to be above 20. All right? So just something to for you, you traders, that's why I have that smaller time frame in there. I don't have it in for FZR trades. I don't educate that way. If you want to trade them, good luck. You know, I just, they're lower probability trades on smaller time frames. All right, higher probability trades are FZR Momo on the 120.20, and high probability trades are momentum setups on the one thirteen thirteen.